Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Up Your Alley. It's a podcast with two best friends. It's me, my name is Taylor Egan. With me as always is my best friend Jake Baggett. Say hi, Jake. Hey buddy. It's a show where we recommend things to each other. Then we come back the next week to rate them on a scale of one to three, depending on how much that thing is up our individual alleys. This week we are going to be talking about the Academy Award nominated film and Jake's recommendation for the week, Anatomy of a Fall, or in French, Anatomy d'une Chute. I'm proud of you, buddy. Yeah? I didn't try. The only word was at the beginning with the credits crawl, where they uh-huh. keep saying with, and it says avac. And I kept going avac. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, we're also talking about the 2023 film uh, available to uh, watch on Hulu by star and writer director, first time writer director, Jake Johnson, Self Reliance. So we're going to be getting into both of those things after we catch up a little bit. Jake, how you doing, bud? It's been all right, man. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple things. One, I want to talk to you. Did you read that Spider Man book I gave you? Yes, I did, actually. Yeah, yes. so they mm-hmm. rebooted, they're kind of rebooting the Marvel Ultimate Universe again. Yeah. Uh, I think we briefly talked about the Marvel Ultimates they did. That was like early 2000s-ish. Yes, right around, yeah. Where the Marvel continuity, and DC's done it too, like DC famously did with the New, New 52, 52. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. I have the entire New 52 Batman run over there. It's fantastic. With Scott Snyder? Yeah. Uh-huh. So good. And Marvel did it as well, the Ultimates. And they basically they took all of their characters after the 60s that, you know, when the 60 ish, starting the 60s, like the 40 ish years of Marvel continuity was just. Yeah, let's just try again. It's insane. Let's just try it got something weird. Else. And so they're like, we're going to reboot it. It's all the characters you know, but mm-hmm. now instead of Peter Parker being a 40 year old professor, yeah. divorced guy, you know, he's back to being a high schooler. Yeah. And they're kind of doing that again, except it's a new continuity. But Peter Parker starts uh, – Ultimate Spider-Man is the only one I've read. I think it's the only yeah. one that's out right now. Um, I let Jake I borrow it, and yeah. it's great. So Spider-Man is – It was really good. Yes. He's middle-aged Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. He's bearded Spider-Man. I like it because he's just – the whole time, everybody's like, Pete, you are just like so sad all yes. the time. He's like, yeah, I just don't know what it is. I'm just super sad. So <laughs> the conceit of it is that there was an event in previous – I think it was last year, actually, where um, – Basically, long story short, Evil Reed Richards uh, decided that he was going to make all the events that made superheroes become the superheroes not happen. Yeah. So in this new continuity, Spider-Man was never made. Peter was never bitten by a radioactive spider. Uncle Ben, still alive. Yep. Uh, And at the end of the first issue, they're basically like, he gets a, a, a message from another dimension. Yeah. Basically saying, hey... You're supposed to be Spider-Man. Yeah. I know this is crazy, but you're supposed to be Spider-Man. Yeah. And here you go. <laughs> here's some spider powers. You want yeah. some spider powers? And it gives him the choice. How'd you like it? You think you're no, excited I to read more really about good. this? I thought it was really good. Yeah. I think it's the first time in a while yeah. for a serialized superhero book. What they did really well was keep the character mm-hmm. kind of legit while yeah. changing their situation. Like yes. with Jay Jonah. Mm-hmm. Jameson is now like a sweetheart, but yeah. he's still a hothead and he still flies off the chain, but he does it out of care for the person right. more than anything else. There's now. A, when you get introduced, Jameson, obviously, he's one of the most recognizable characters in comics. Yeah. So you see him and he's running through the Daily Bugle bullpen and he's yelling Parker. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, Pete's about to get it. But yeah. he's yelling for Ben, yeah. who works there as well. And it's because he's got to tell him something. And he's like, oh, hi, Pete. Yeah. And then, like, he gave Pete his tie to wear and everything like that. I was like, this yeah. is, I haven't been this jazzed for new superhero comics yeah. month to month in a while. I can feel you. Yeah. It's something, it, it's got the comfort of having the characters that I know, mm-hmm. but d- delivering a brand new story. Yeah. I'm Ooh. excited because I don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. It's, it's really a cool thing. And I think it's coming at a, kind of critical time where the Marvel movies were just getting a new string of DC movies in a new continuity. Yeah. And the Marvel movies, they're kind of hinting that they're kind of working towards a reset as well, or at least a refocus away from the characters that we know. Probably a good idea, right? Yeah. Because it's been, what? We've been doing this since high school, Yeah, two, watching those. No, 2008, yeah. Iron Man came out. Oh, yes, 2008. Yeah. Right, right. We went uh, when it was right next to the borders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So yeah, I'm I'm jazz, and I was as soon as I read it, I was excited to give it to you. I was like, Jake's got to read this because yeah. I think the coolest thing that it does in the last couple issues, and I guess should have said this earlier, but spoilers for the first issue of Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's the first issue, and if this doesn't get you wanting to read it, I don't know what will. But the main thing was 
that he is given a choice for the first time on whether or not he wants to be yeah. Spider-Man. Because that was kind of always the backbone of the character. And something, when I let you read uh, Spider-Man Life Story, way back in the beginning of the podcast, mm-hmm. uh, by Chip Zdarsky, it's mm-hmm. always that thing where Spider-Man is his responsibility. That's the whole thing. With great power comes great responsibility. It's like, you were given this, so now you have to do this. Yes. Spider-Man in this, he's married to Mary Jane. He's got two kids. Mm-hmm. He's got a good job. His uncle's still alive. And it's like, hey, you know that thing that's eating away at you? Yeah. You, you he's happy a choice on, to make. He's, not, he's content with autopilot. Yeah. He's, he's got a good he's life going for coped. himself, but he, he's just not fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And the fulfillment that he's looking for is Spider-Man. His responsibility. I know. So he's going to put some stuff on the line. I'm so jazzed. And he had a really good talk with uh, MJ about it. Yeah. Being like, you know, I, I'm going to make some big changes. Right. She's like, I don't want to go into it, but I want to make some big changes. She's yeah. like, does this affect me? He's like, uh, your love for me? He's like, no. He's like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fine. He's like, yeah, you can just do it, man. And there's just fun, do it. fun little cameos like uh, it's there's, a, there's a priest and it's priest Matthew Murdoch and you're just like, oh, so he's not Daredevil either. Yeah. He, he went into the Matt priesthood. Just, yeah. Yeah. And Matt just, they were like, what is he if he's not Daredevil? He's Catholic. Exactly. <laughs> What's the next thing? He's <laughs> just a Catholic. But I think it's fantastic. I'm so jazzed about it. Yeah. I, it was fun. It was a it was a really fun read. I think next month. Well, I guess this month in February, uh, the first issue of Ultimate Black Panther comes out. So mm-hmm. I'm going to scoop that up. As Maybe well. that a shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. for sure. The other thing I want to talk to you about ahead of time was uh, yesterday was the PlayStation State of Play. Right. Since this is basically turning into a comic book and video game podcast, yeah. where we <laughs> where argue about movies, just at two middle aged white guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Talking about this stuff. So the state of play, uh, the first they announced it was the first state of the play, and then at the end of it, they said there'll be another one next month. So these events yeah. are coming in quicker and quicker succession. Yeah, you think it's going to be a month to month thing? Maybe. I no. mean, if anything else, they're doing you know twenty million views on YouTube. It's a yeah, wasn't that crazy? Yeah. I, the first when I went into it, it said seventy five thousand people watching. I was like, that sounds about right. And mm-hmm. then while we were watching it, uh, I was watching it out with people. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they're like, no, it's got twenty million people watching it. Like, Holy, it's yeah. So, what was your? Uh, you excited about some video games coming up? It's not really any that we talked about in our look ahead. The uh, Stellar Blade looks like my type of game, which yes, is just it a does. slashy uh, hot chick doing slashy hot yeah. chick stuff. That's mm-hmm. perfect for me. Yeah, I love it. The other thing was Kojima saying that he's making another action espionage game. So that's Hideo Kojima, famously of Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, and I he's just using what uh, tactical espionage a- action is what the uh, subtitle underneath mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid was. And him just saying espionage action means, I'm going to try to make a Metal Gear without but making he, a Metal But he does Gear. say that it's a, a new IP, yes, and he which also I'm stoked about. he also says all the crazy Kojima things that you would... Uh, that gets me hyped up when he's like, next year is his 40th uh, anniversary of yeah. working in the games. That's nuts. Because <laughs> I guess Metal Gear for NES came out probably 86, something like 85, 86. The first game that he made was called Pingu Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But know. I'm just talking for just Metal yeah. Gear. It's been Metal almost Gear's been 40 years. A long time for the, uh, yeah. uh, the uh, M, I can't remember, some Japanese computer. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called. But it's an uh, MS DOS. He says, uh, he's like, I don't want to put too much hype on it, but I feel like this game's going to be the culmination of all of my work. Yeah. He's such and, a little rascal. He, I love it. He's <laughs> just like, and it's going to be a video game, but it's going to have the actors, the direction, the theming, and the <laughs> effects of a movie. Right. And so we're really going to try and blend the lines of what is both reality and Which- gaming. And I'm like, okay, that's keep it, it going, buddy. That's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about it because that's something we talked about with your love of Alan Wake and Sam Lake is his yeah. name, yeah, uh-huh. and how you love those games because they were doing things that you couldn't do in a movie mm-hmm. in a video game. Yeah. And then I'm stepping on a limb here, but not a big one. Your mm-hmm. other favorite video game person. Hideo Kojima yeah. is saying, no, I'm going to make video He's games like, no, just like movies. This is going to be a movie. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. your two favorites are really doing completely Isn't that opposite wild? things. The, the, uh, his, he's always wanted to make movies. Yeah. So, and, uh, and Metal Gear, like I, I didn't Gear. play much of Phantom Pain, but I yeah. know Sons of Liberty had like a, not Sons of, Sons of Liberty, what is it? That's the second one. Guns of the Patriots. Is that four? Yeah. 
had like a 90 minute cutscene yeah. in it. They had over hour long cutscenes in it. Yeah. Bananas. That is a movie. Well, and like uh, Metal Gear Solid is one of the first games that had uh, action camera angles in mm-hmm. it. And like that's revolutionary. Yeah. And uh, if he wants to make a movie, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, but uh, what I do appreciate about games is trying to develop the art form so that it stands on its own. Right. But I understand where he's coming from. And if you watch the trailer for Death Stranding 2, I'm pretty sure you would understand that he's th- th- if okay. he wants to make a movie, which that game is going to be a movie. Death Stranding 2? Death Stranding is going to be a, a movie for I, A24. Okay. I did want to talk to you about that. Yeah. So I've never played Death Stranding. I don't know. I've played it for maybe 20 hours. I, I don't know what, what in the maybe hell is going on. Maybe 20 hours and you don't know what's going on? That, nothing that's really uh, connecting to my brain. It, it's Jesus. it's a very simple story on its front, which is you're connecting networks again across yeah. America, so that uh, the world, so that America could talk to itself again. It's like right. the internet's down. You're going out there to bring back the internet. That was the type. But of you thing. got a baby in a jar. But you got a baby in a jar and because Daryl Dixon from Walking Dead. The, a baby is like on the beach in quotes, as in like close to Jeez. life and death, coming from death into life, while on the beach is. The beach is what's coming, or water uh, what brought land. about the apocalypse that we have now, which is basically death is overlapping on top of life. Oh my god! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so like I was lost watching this trailer because it's I. Uh, I think there's some weird things. There's, Every- a, uh, there's a puppet. Yeah, there's a talking like, puppet. It's so glorious looking. Was that a joke about God of War? Because he he has a little talking puppet. Um, and Norman Reedus puts it on his butt. Yeah, he puts it on his butt. He's like, "Oh, really? You're gonna put me there?" And I was like, "Oh, that's where Kratos keeps the head." I think it's so, more of like he's like, "You're gonna put me on your butt," and he's like, "I want to go up front." And that's more like, of a that's good... right next to your penis. It's it's. I think it's more of a nod towards Guillermo del Toro. Could be, yeah, because Guillermo del Toro was in the first game. Was he? Yes. And if you noticed, George Miller is in this game. Was he the doctor guy? Yeah, he was the old. A uh, guy in the glasses. Yeah, that was doing like the surgery at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's George Miller. Yeah. He w- he goes to talk to these legendary directors, and he's like, "Do you want to be in my video game?" <laughs> and yeah. Like, why not? And they're like, "Hell yes, I want to be in your video game." Yeah. So, do you think Death Stranding something I should go back to? I'm gonna go back to it myself, or not go back to, just go to for me. Yes. From what what I play, it's a very uh, wonderful game. I'm kind of in between. It's, it's so much fun to play. Yeah. Because it's. A, a game where Kojima's idea was he, when you traverse in other games, it's it's not an event. You're going from A to B. Where mm-hmm. this one, you I look that, at yeah. A to B, and you really have to think about it. You'll come across like a stream, and you'll be like, I'm pretty sure that's not deep enough to really mess me up with how much weight I got. And then you fall over, and you're like messing up there. But you can take your time, or you can push it. There's a social aspect of it it's where like people build Oregon roads and stuff. Almost? Kind of, yeah. I would say. Where you just got to make sure that you take care of yourself, you bring as much stuff as you can, but try not to overload yourself, and it's just a delivery game. Huh. Take this from A to B, but make sure you don't run into these death uh, ghosts that are around. That's what BB helps you find. BB turns on this uh, machine that's is, on your back. Is the baby named BB? Clips. Yeah, it's called BB. BB to baby? BB to baby. <laughs> that's fun. BB. BB is Mads Mickelson's baby, I think. Sure. Yeah. That Mads chance. Mickelson is in it. He's a bad guy. Yeah. I think. <laughs> in this trailer, there's like a guy with like a guitar gun. Yes. Like a guitar rail and gun. And I was like, that thing, is so Hideo Kojima. He's got a mask on. Yeah. And then he takes the mask off and he's got Joker makeup underneath. Yeah. It. That is the wildest it's reveal. so Kojima. <laughs> it's it's crazy. so funny. So, like, I'm not as hyped about this as I am about him doing action. Yes. Espionage. That, that, solid, def- my favorite I'm, thing. I'm the same way. But I, I'm in. Yeah. Like, I'm going to buy Death Stranding 2. I support Kojima. Yeah. Whatever he's making. I'm going to play OD when that game comes out. That's his next horror game that he's working on. Yeah, there was a remake of a horror game on this, Until Dawn. Yes. I, is that a super scary game? Um, No. Not for, you. Not, for you. not for you anymore, buddy. Not for me You've anymore? You've been through it. You really? know how to handle it. You'll be Aww. able to handle that game. Absolutely. The uh, other... Well, one thing that was just fun is... Dave the Diver is getting a Godzilla expansion. Yeah, wasn't that funny? Fucking great. <laughs> Why not? That game's so kooky and fun. Just keep doing... He's doing that, and they're doing a... What's the... A Dredge crossover, too. 
Damn. So I hope we get Dave the Diver crossovers, which is everything. That's wonderful. I yeah. think the next one, calling it right now, it's Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> Just put Echo the Dolphin in Dave the Diver too. I would love another Echo the Dolphin. And they had uh, a trailer for a game, Rise of the Ronin, which yes, is... that looks great. It looks like they crossed the Batman Arkham games with Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm for this so, completely. It feels a lot like a Neo. Neo is the game, N-I-O-H, which okay. is a lot like a arcade style of Dark Souls. Okay. That's what got me turned on. It yeah. looks like Neo, but like more Japanese. I just saw the grappling hook and the... Uh, Okay, because there's all the monsters, and I was like, "Great, yeah. I want to fight monsters more." Yeah, and there's a there's a comic up. of Samurai Batman. Did you ever read that? No. Yeah, Batman Samurai. <laughs> That's what I looked at because he has like the cape that comes out. It's just like the Batman Arkham game and a grappling around and a little kite. Yeah, but I also like that he doesn't just use a sword. Yeah, it's got kind of nice. He they pulls call it like out a pole arm, fire gun, and stuff, yeah, stuff like that. Fire stick is what it's called. Yeah, fun. I'm happy about that too. So I'm into Rise of the Ronin. Yeah. And it's going to be some good games. Yeah. I, I, th- I just thought it was funny that we talked about v- upcoming video games, and none of these were on our list yeah. of <laughs> upcoming video games. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll take it. As I started playing, uh, was it you that told me about the game Session, the skateboarding game? Probably. Yeah. It's pretty fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's on PlayStation it's Plus It's different now. from Skate, which yes. is, it, it, my brain jumps to skate controls when mm-hmm. I'm playing it for you the first couple times. Gotta focus, but it's but fun. But then... Once you get it going, once you uh, hit a line, it feels really good. Yes. Like, right back to it. It's definitely one of those games, too. Like, you just put it perfectly. When It's fun to get good at it. Yeah. I hate games that once you get good, it's fun, but it's not fun getting good. I don't like grinding. Or, I mean, I like grinding in skateboards and stuff, but, like, grinding out to get levels and whatnot is just boring The to first me. skate game had a bunch of behind-the-scenes talks. Really? And one of them, they were talking to one of the skaters, and I can't remember who, but they asked him about why he likes skating so much. And this thing was like, it was like in your head, I can, he's like, in my head, I can see the line, mm-hmm. you know, and I can do it, you know, hundreds of times and fail hundreds of times. And he's like, and it gets so frustrating and I'm so upset. He's like, but when I nail it that one time, it's over and I feel fantastic. Right. He's like, that's what I love about skating. He's that's like, what I love about golf. Right. Like you hit so many bad shots, but mm-hmm. then when you hit that good one, you're just like, oh, fuck yeah. That yeah. feels so good. I get that part of the commitment. Yeah. He's like, he's not pushing him. He's not pushing a competition or anything. He doesn't want to be better than anybody else. He sees something that he knows he can do mm-hmm. and he pushes himself until he can nail it. Yeah. And he's like, that's, that's really cool. That's very inspiring. That's and good. It's, yeah. The session gives me that feeling. When, you, when I see that there's no hang. Uh, right below a parking garage ramp. And yeah. I'm like, I could jump off that parking garage and land on that overhang. And then I do it for about uh, 10, 15 minutes until I nail it. And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah, if, if you're listening to this and you have PlayStation Plus or premium, whatever it's on, mm-hmm. I, I recommend Session because it does have If you good, like Skate, if you have, it. it has good setups. I mean, it's not Tony Hawk. If you want to play Tony Hawk, just fucking go play yeah. the remakes of Tony Hawk. But it you can set up the lines and it has like a quick respawn thing where you can yep. set set a marker and like keep doing this and it's it's great it's fun to get good at and i'm really enjoying dicking around with that while i try to find something else i've got i have two trophies away from a platinum in dead island 2 wow and they're, they're just combat things like you have to like kill or wow. maim three zombies with one shuriken throw mm. And it's just stuff like that, and I'm like, I don't feel like just sitting in. Well, Infinite Wealth is out now, so I'm going to be playing that. I have noticed you've played that a lot. Yeah. And I see clips of it online where it's just like running around in a Segway. Yeah. I it's, rarely take the Segway. Your, your Yakuza games that you love so it's, much. It's now, now like, like a, a dragon. dragon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's incredible so far. That's fun. It's, it's so much fun. Yeah, I've been playing more Fortnite than there's I like a, to admit. There's now a new button where if you're over leveled mm-hmm. uh, towards a party that's coming up to you. You can hit L2 for SmackDown, which is your guys just go over there and just beat the ever-living shit out of them. <laughs> it takes three seconds. You get all the hype afterwards. Be like, you did it. Here's all your money and experience. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my God. So just it's like, kind of fun to just walk around. Yeah. And now that it, you're in Hawaii, so people speak English. Nice. And so it, now the nonsensical stuff is in English that I just absolutely love. Every time you're walking by people that are mean, they're going to say, like, what are you looking at? 
hey, 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 asshole, <laughs> like all the time. One of my favorites is a street performer who's a, a, a statue, a living statue. And you walk One by of those him. metal painted guys? Yeah. yeah. He's, you're walking by him, and he's just like getting agitated by it. He's like, this ain't a show, buddy. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, it is exactly a show. It's <laughs> literally what this is, sir. Your performance artist. But it's so good. I don't know. Right. Hell of a lot of fun. All right. We got some good games coming up. All right. Well, we're going to get into our recommendations for this week right after this quick word from this week's sponsor is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety or if you're just a human who lives in the world and is going through a hard time therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way that's why i'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible and that's important because finding a therapist can be really hard especially if you're limited to the options in your area BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with your therapist, and there's a link in our description. It's betterhelp.com slash alley. That's betterhelp.com slash alley. Clicking that link helps you support this channel and also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist to see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't fit in with your first therapist, and that's common, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without the stress of insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. I'm a big proponent of therapy, and anybody that knows me can attest to the difference that it's made in my life the past couple years, and I recommend this program to anybody. So if you're struggling, please consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash that's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash alley for 10% off your first month. And we want to thank BetterHelp for supporting our podcast. All right, we're back. Let's get into, first we're talking about Jake's recommendation for me, which is the uh, 2003 French, my God, is it French film, Anatomy of a Fall. It's weird that you said that when most of it's in English. It's not. <laughs> it's not mostly in English. Yes. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, one Golden Globe for, um, well, won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, yeah. which I'm told the Palme d'Or is important. Yeah. It's top prize at the uh, Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> and it's nominated for the Oscars. I'm trying to find on the list. I know it's nominated. For, it won Golden Globes. Best picture. Uh, best screenplay and best foreign language film. Nice. Um, seven nominations for the Academy Awards, or sorry, the British uh, film, and five for the Academy Awards: Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Film Editing. Nice. I have something to say about all five of those <laughs> nominations. So, Jake, let's get into <laughs> why you recommended the movie for me. Uh, I think we're both kind of doing a thing about Oscar-nominated films, trying to see them. Uh, yeah. We talked about an Oscar-nominated film last week. Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to keep the train going. We're, let's keep it going. All right. So talk to me let's about do Anatomy of a Fall. Anatomy of a Fall. Go for it. So it's a movie about a writer who is also married to a writer. Mm -hmm. um, something happens. He falls. And we don't know if she did it or if he accidentally fell. We don't know what happened. Right. It was up in the... Snowy mountains, so and it was just it was just her, her husband, and her blind son mm -hmm. that were there, and it's just about the procedural of the case, right? And how it picks up, yeah, the trial, and it, it doesn't it's it's a mystery to the audience as well. Yeah, it's not one of the things where going through the trial, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, but you know you're trying to do it. It's not a it's not a my cousin Vinny situation where you know these people are innocent, and you're trying to make sure yeah, you get the right outcome. You're of the not trial. told. You're not. You don't see the incident. Right. You just see the aftermath, just mm -hmm. like everything. Yeah. All right. So, uh, why do you like it? Do you think it deserves the best picture nomination? Yes, really? I honestly believe that it's a fantastic film, and yeah. I would love everybody to go see it. Yeah, it's I thought playing, it's playing in some cinemas, and <laughs> I, I rented it on Amazon Prime. I think mm -hmm. it was like. Three ninety nine to I rent it. I thought so. the lady was uh, great in it. 
That would be uh, Sandra Huller. Yes. Uh, she's the one nominated for Best Actress. I thought she was incredible. I mm-hmm. thought the kid was incredible. It's not a cast you're going to know anybody. No. If you're a casual, I mean, you might if you're a big foreign film buff. Yeah. I didn't recognize a single one of these people. No. Yeah. But uh, the kid, I thought he was incredible mm-hmm. as well, even though he dressed like Spuget. Yeah. I thought I s- he looked great. I thought he was great in did, it. Did you like my little analogy that I made for you? Yes, I did. Yes. You sent me a photo. What was it again? It was the kid from The Shining. Yes. And Chris, Kristen Shaw. Yeah. Mashed together, <laughs> make <laughs> this kid. <laughs> he's like if Kristen Shaw dressed up as the kid from The Shining, and he's dead ringer for him. And I like the directing yep. a hell of a lot. I love how everything was shot. Yeah. And uh, it, there was like two or three just incredible scenes in here. One okay. of them was the recording was an amazing scene between two people. Mm-hmm. The uh, And most of the trial was just great. Most of the movie. The it's two and a half hour long movie. Yeah. Most of the trial, especially the prosecutor when he comes up, mm-hmm. the prosecutor is somebody that you're typically against. Yeah. When you play him up as evil, but the prosecutor was playing it really well as a guy who was frustrated that justice wasn't being served. Right. He knew that she did it. And he was like, I cannot believe nobody else is seeing this. Yeah, it's a, it's not a clear-cut bad guy, good guy yes. situation. It's because like we, like we said, you don't know Yes, you know if she did it or not. So the whole time as the you're watching it as the, uh, the viewer. And spoiler, you still don't know. No. At the end of the movie. And you know how much I love movies with ambiguous endings, <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> it's not ambiguous. Other than if she did it or not. Yeah. But the outcome of the case is uh, great. Yeah. It's mostly about the child, and they play it up really well. Mm-hmm. And I thought, awesome. Why didn't you like this movie? What makes you think I didn't like it, Jacob? Because you did this whole thing where, like, at the very beginning of this podcast, you're like, we're talking about Anatomy of the Fall, and then we're talking about... Jake Johnson's Hulu movie, (laughs) Self-Reliance. Okay, so this movie was two and a half hours long. Yeah. Uh, Self-Reliance was an hour and a half long. (laughs) Yeah. I would have liked them to switch (laughs) runtimes. I would have liked more Biff with in Jake Johnson, which we'll get into, and less of this. This one did not hit with me, bud. Yeah? At all. And I will say this. I did have to restart it. Yeah. Because... Like you said, it's a French movie, uh-huh. but uh, she's talking, in, and the language does factor into it. Yeah, she's like, German. She moves to France with, with a, French a French husband. Guy, but they both speak but, English, and yeah. it, it plays a part. We'll get into spoilers later, because we can do spoilers for this movie, because I don't think it's going to make a difference I already either. spoiled it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she gets <laughs> off at the end. And she gets off with some other people, too. <laughs> and a weird lawyer. Okay, I have a lot of thoughts. Yeah. Let, me, let me try it. I have notes. So, it, it's just, I had to restart it because I didn't have closed captioning on, and yeah. I was like, oh, this is in English. And then there was like a brief little scene in French, and I thought it was one of those things where they do, like, oh, it's just a little bit, but you can kind of get through context, mm-hmm. you know, sure. what's yeah. being, it's like, oh, they're not going to pop up it subtitles. Was a, it was a choice to for not that. choose. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, okay, it's one of those movies. And then uh, it was a long scene. <laughs> of just French. It was when they were interviewing the kid. Yeah. Like when the detectives were interviewing the kid. I'm like, I'm not getting this through context. <laughs> and I was <laughs> I was like, oh right. I should turn on the captions. You know, I didn't like this movie, Jake. I don't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say that. I didn't start off on the right foot with it. Um, you know I love a courtroom drama. Yeah. And I think it just because this podcast is just Full, I'm not putting on any pretense of being like, I need to like this movie because it's won the Palme d'Or and it's nominated for a Best Picture. Just not my cup of tea at all. Yeah. I think this movie is so... This this is my <laughs> rebel moon. I, I don't know yeah? why you like this movie. I don't know why any... There's nothing in this That's movie... so fascinating. Man. ...that I think was enjoyable. I don't think there was one one character who is even remotely relatable or not even relatable in like I can see myself in that person or not even in the other part where like this is such a terrible person like I hope they get their comeuppance. 
everyone in this was just an, a human being. Boring and uninteresting. I'm not watching movies to see normal I human thought beings. that their recorded conversation was okay, so yeah, we'll get into incredible that. and enlightening. Okay, so because I thought that she was a really cool person, and then listening to the uh, recording, mm-hmm. I thought she's just as cool as I thought she was. And then you listen to it more, and I was like, I don't know who the hell's talking anymore. And then shit was like, that's incredible. Like, that was such an incredible well, scene let's, let's give, because it recontextualizes everything. Let's give context to the listeners because no one saw this fucking movie. I, so well, there's I there's a people. thing where uh, uh, in the court case, there's – and first of all, French court, it's a madhouse. If this is how court or trials work in France, I don't know how they get anything done because they're just entering evidence whenever. People can change their pleas. You can add surprise nonsense. The procedure's garbage, and everyone's wearing those stupid fucking robes. And I don't like the way they have uh, the... Uh, is that the fall of the movie? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, this is just... All right. So this isn't a bad thing about the movie. This is a bad thing about France. Okay? I don't think we have any listeners in France. But it, it's just... That's off-putting to me. And that's why I didn't like the movie, first of all. You give me Law & Order SVU, I get it done-done. I know that they're two equal in different parts that represent the people in the criminal justice system. I'm for it. Man. I don't like the way they talk to the witnesses or the, uh, the defendant just casually regardless so the your part you're talking about was probably the most interesting part in the movie they have the movie's shown in kind of real time yes or like it moves along you know with it and it doesn't have like too many flashbacks the only flashbacks that you see there are two of them and it's basically it's- acting out testimony yeah one time it's the kid telling a story and they act it out yeah. and the other time they're playing a recording that the dead husband secretly recorded of him and his wife yeah she didn't know it was there the night before right the day before yeah, yeah. the day before he died mm-hmm. and that was kind of interesting the like you said but it was just these are two people that i really just don't like just come on guys mm-hmm. just get a divorce <laughs> like there's there's cheating on each other and there's the whole thing about what we talked about briefly earlier where the dead husband was saying that oh you're making me speak english that's not even my mother tongue and she's like yeah. it's not my mother tongue you yeah. made me go to france yeah and now we're speaking english and i'm german yeah i'm just like just get a divorce why are these people she loves him but do they yeah first of all i'll say this i think she killed him yeah i a hundred if we want to talk about movies with ambiguous endings that you get to draw your own conclusions yeah i 100 percent believe she killed him just because you don't like her yeah 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 and like that's the point of the movie yes is that they were trying to win by saying, like, isn't she so unlikable? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I have no evidence to say that she killed him. Also, the prosecutor... I cannot prove that she killed him, but look at her, your honor. <laughs> the prosecutor had a shaved... Look at what she's wearing. The prosecutor had a shaved head, like a, a buzzed yeah. haircut, mm-hmm. like he was a space marine. Mm-hmm. That's off-putting as well. It's like, you don't even look professional. <laughs> <laughs> but they were even bringing up her books and being like, yes. oh, this is, it's so the trial's, creepy. It was so... It's a kangaroo court. It's inadmissible as evidence, first of all. Well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's... How, how are we running this trial? And that's what... French. The kid, You're running it French, and it's chaos. And that's when the kid comes in, and he says, we're not even trying to find out... We can't even prove how. Right. So now we have to try and find why. And that's when you see the judge perk up. And yeah. she's like... He's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's great. I no. It's great because it's supposed to be a madhouse. We're not supposed to be seeing a perfectly run court because there's no such fucking thing. There Everything is. is a piece of shit. Everything in, across the board. In France, and I don't disagree seeing. with you. I don't disagree the, with you that everything's a piece of shit in France. The prosecutor's being a piece of shit. Yeah. The, no, the defendant was my is favorite a piece character. of shit. Prosecutor was my favorite character. My favorite character was the handler of the child. She did her job Oh, perfectly yeah, well. she was nice. She, she was, was, a, she was a ray of sunshine. I will give you credit for that. She was just there. She was like, we can't talk about the trial. She... They were oh, yeah. becoming friends with each other, and she was still being like, you know I can't do this. So that's the thing. So the, right. the mom gets off of... She gets out on bail before the trial. The kid is kind of the only witness. He uh, finds his dad's dead body. The kid's blind, but he's going back uh, from a walk with his dog. Yeah. We'll get to the fucking dog. Um, And finds his dad's dead body. And so they're basically saying like, oh, did you hear them shouting? Did you hear fighting? Whatever. Yada, yada, yada. The kid's a witness to this. But then they're like, okay, well, she's out on bail, but kid's blind, so... He has to go back and live with his mom, and this lady's going to live with you, too, to make sure you don't tamper with the witness. Yeah. 
holy shit, you could not do that in American court. <laughs> like, you can't just, if the kid's the only witness, you need to expedite the trial, you need to take a deposition so it's sworn testimony so the kid doesn't have to talk in front of his mother ahead yeah. of time. Mm-hmm. There's no protection for the child in this yeah. whatsoever other than this poor lady who has to hang That's out at the house so funny with that the I murderer. usually don't like these types of feelings, you know? Yeah. Like... Uh, all this stuff is making me frustrated yes. while I'm watching the movie. But you but liked I, it? I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I was uh, watching something that wasn't trying to condescend to me. How do we have the same opinions about facts, but we come to a different conclusion? This is this is the craziest thing. Is that know? what the movie's supposed to Because it's like the big short do? type thing. Big short was amazing. I think it's terrible. Yeah. You see that? But we can both agree Ryan Gosling is great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But I thought that this movie was great. I thought that this movie showed a side of people that you can rarely connect like that. Okay. People feel so real in this. And I thought, again, the the lead actress, I thought she was incredible. Uh, she so The entire time I was rooting for her, and the only time I, was never I, felt, for her. I felt betrayed from the recording that she did, where um, <laughs> the husband even says, you're so violent. And she says, I am violent. <laughs> See, I got the exact opposite thing when I heard the recording of her being a shithead. I was like, I fucking knew it. No, because uh, I was hearing, I was hearing exactly what she was saying. It was like and believing because because he was saying like, you don't know what I'm sacrificing, and she's saying, you don't know what I'm sacrificing. Right. And he's like, I have to go to a I, marriage I counselor no time. and get a divorce. And she's like, I have no time to write. And she's like, make time to write. I'm not the one that's telling you that you don't have time. And he's like, every everything works around you. And she's like, I don't know about any of this. <laughs> What she also then? stole her book from him, and she's like, "Yeah, that's the that's the uh, the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah, is um, the plundering. That's a really good word for it. Is that she is so French? She's a plunderer, yeah. of him, where he is a weak man. She made him a cuckold. If we yeah. want to use another word, he made himself a cuckold. Is what they are saying I from don't. the other side. Yeah, is that he was a man that could not forgive himself for what happened to his son. Yeah, and because it was an accident, it was kind of vague about what happened, but yeah. it was kind of his fault that the kid's blind. Yes, Vaguely. he didn't pick up yeah. the kid. He was uh, he was on a writing streak. Yeah. He was doing well, so he's like, uh, oh, "I'm gonna hire a babysitter. He's gonna pick her up." Yeah, the babysitter. Uh, uh, ends up in an accident and the kid loses uh, optic nerve damage. Yeah, and uh, he the father blames himself. And what the wife was talking about was was um, I didn't want to see this as a thing that we fix. This is something that our kid is now. I wanted to move on. I wanted to say that he can be a kid. He can be himself. We can move on. We can grow up. You were the one that kept wanting to blame yourself. You were the one that kept wanting to go down. I wanted to move on, so I moved on. Hmm. And that's that's the stuff that I was picking she didn't up move from the on to other people that she cheated on her husband with. That's the thing. She's like, you stopped having sex. He's like, I can do that, but not forever. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, get a can- divorce. <laughs> he said, the horrors they're inflicting on this, this child. She came to him and right. said, I want an open relationship, and he said, okay. And then she had an open relationship. He's like, you slept with another woman. Yeah. He's like. Yes! <laughs> and then she came to him and pushed him out a fucking window and no. killed him. No. You don't think there's any because shot. Because what the kid said. Because I don't think the kid would have any reason to lie. The kid because lived the kid with his mother. drugged his dog okay. to find out. if Okay, so at, at, the end, at the end of the movie, the kid, uh, there's testimony that comes out that the dad tried to uh, kill himself, swallowed a whole bunch of aspirin, yeah. and then he and I, and threw Again, up. it's something that nobody knows because it was just the wife and right. the husband that saw this. Right. No evidence yeah. in that. At this point, it's hearsay. Mm. But if we're going to an American actual legal justice system, mm. fucking France. And so then the kid says, or he has this experiment where he's going to feed his dog, my favorite character in the entire movie, yeah, the a great dog. dog. Border Collie. Yeah. Sweet dog. Won the Palm Dog Award, mm. which is an award for the best dog <laughs> in movies. I found out the French do that at Cannes. <laughs> Kind of turned me around on Cannes Film oh, Festival now a little bit. Better. <laughs> if there's an award for best goodest boy, essentially, <laughs> I'm all for it. So there's well a scene that dog where the kid feeds the dog aspirin, wakes up, the dog's like on the floor, and yeah. then the kid walks up to it. The dog has its eyes like laid back. Yeah. I thought if there was a dog death in this movie, yeah. and it was this fucking 
kid yeah. who at that point I had a little bit of sympathy for yeah. because I was like, this poor kid is in a horrible situation by two people who should have been divorced a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Irreparable damage done to this child. Uh-huh. I, not only physically, but emotionally and mentally too. Sure, sure. And now, clearly, this kid's almost killing a dog on a <laughs> hunch he has yeah. that might get his mother out of jail. The that psychological level of trauma you have to get to where you're like, I have this I'd dog be right there that with you. I rely to get around. Yeah. I need this dog to function I in would, the world. And yes, I agree with you 100. percent So the to dog make sure live. my mom doesn't go to jail for killing my dad, <laughs> I have to try to kill my dog. I was just like, what is happening? Fuck all these people. This is the worst situation. Yeah, so bad. Yeah, dog turns out to be fine. I yeah. hope. Yeah, that's ambiguous too. A dog jumps up on no, the end. I felt fine. betrayed by the dog because the last shot is she's sleeping on a bed and the dog jumps up next to her. I was like, "That's a bad dog." Why? Don't get next to that lady. She killed her you husband. You put a whole new story in your own head about what's going on. Everybody here. puts stories in their <laughs> yeah. own head. That's the whole point of this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. And my point of the movie is this movie's terrible. It's so bad. <laughs> it is a good. So movie. So bad. I was so Absolutely angry watching this. Could not recommend it enough. I think this it's gets deserved. A, this gets a award. one from me, Jacob. It's going to win. Give it a one. Zero Oscars. But you did it uh, halfway through this movie. Watching it, I was like, "Is Jake mad at me? <laughs> did I do something to?" Oh, upset you wait. Him? Your Rebel Moon punishment's coming up, buddy. Was this wasn't the Rebel Moon punishment? No. This was a actual movie that I thought you would at least be like, "Oh, mm, that's fine," because I have a Rebel Moon. Punishment, punishment for you when part, Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, comes we out. Already know. I already told you. I'm giving it my all. You don't have to recommend it to me. I yeah. am watching it on my own volition. It's going to be awesome. I am reading any books that come out. There, I'm giving, there aren't any. I'm giving everything, everything that I can to this. To Rebel Moon? To this franchise. I'll yes. give it, it all yes. for this second movie to prove to me that it has something. Yeah. And I feel like I could still come out on top saying... What a garbage movie that was. I can't wait till they turn it around. All right. If so they yeah, turn it, it around, I, I would be just as happy. It's a one for me. This is going to win no awards in <laughs> an award ceremony that counts more than the Cannes Film Festival. You know awards. how lucky you are that I can't find a zone of interest? My brother-in-law went and saw that uh, two nights ago. You know who directed it? Who? Jonathan Glazer. Oh, that's right. From uh, Under the Skin. Yeah. Yeah. That was brought up to my attention. Oh, yeah. You're going to be watching that. Also brought to my attention, he directed the Jamiroquai Canned Heat video. Yes, he did. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everybody really loves that. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> Big hat. Big hat. And then they do the Inception flip arounds. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun little uh, moving floor. Yeah. This will not win Best Director. That will be... Um, <laughs> Star Wars. Rebel Moon. No. That came out in... <laughs> oh, I guess it was 2023. You missed the nomination, though. Uh, that'll be Chris Nolan. Uh, best picture will be Chris Oppenheimer. Nolan. Best actress. Best uh, picture will be Oppenheimer. Yeah, we knew. What? I haven't even seen it, and I already know Holdovers is going to be something that people watch often. It's not going to win Best Picture though. Holdovers. Yeah, over Oppenheimer. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. We could do an Oscar show. Can we, we do should. an Oscar we could, recap we episode? Could hang out here and watch it live. I don't care. <laughs> best original screenplay is going to be the Holdovers. Best film editing is going to be Oppenheimer. Uh, best actress is going to be anybody. <laughs> Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. <laughs> Florence Pugh. She from no, she's not, Oppenheimer. She's not nominated. Who's nominated for best actress this year? Mm. I don't know, mm. but not this lady. Not Margot Robbie either. <laughs> Margot Robbie is uh, no uh, Emma Stone's going to win it. Oh, uh, for Poor Things. Yeah. Or uh, li- oh no, they're going to give it to Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. Mm. Mm-hmm. Booyah. yeah. Mm. So this movie's going to win nothing. <laughs> it's going to win Best a one them. from uh, Up Your Alley Podcast, <laughs> and it's going to get... Not from Up Your Alley Podcast. That's both of us, no, no, and no. I don't give it no, a no, one. No, 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 The podcast <laughs> is the recommendation of the recommendee. I don't think we've ever discussed this, but it should be. What is this? Yes. It's a new thing. It gets a one. <laughs> you brought it to the podcast. I gave it a one. So now that's the yeah. that's the opinion of the podcast? Rebel Moon gets a one, too, though. That's fine. <laughs> It's a late night recording I session. This is going you, off the rail. You shot yourself in the foot to shoot me in the foot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
It's a real feeding your dog aspirin to save your mom from jail time situation. That was so I funny. don't care. All right, let's talk about something awesome and a little lighter. This is uh, exactly why I wanted to do this one second. Fair enough. I mean, I, I re-listened to last week's episode where I went off the rails yelling about old actors at the end. Yeah, man. It's probably a good thing we get Taylor's angry old man rant out of the way earlier. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Self-Reliance 2023 film um, on Hulu. First uh, written, first movie written and directed by Jake Johnson. People probably know Jake Johnson best from New Girl. Yep. Um, I watched this, and oh, this movie also has uh, Anna Kendrick, Natalie Natalie Morales, Biff Whiff. Mm-hmm. We're all Santa Claus. Biff Whiff. Hef, uh, yeah. Biff Whiff heads. We're uh, Shirt Brothers. That's what they're called. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Oh, that's because fantastic. he does the, the sketch. Uh, Shirt Brother sketch. Yeah. And he had cancer, and uh, they sold those shirts. Uh, oh, to really? raise money for him. Yeah. That's awesome. So you take a picture with you when you find another one, and you send it to Biff with being like, look, my shirt brother. <laughs> and he said you right back saying, hey, good looking, shirt brothers. And, uh... Hey, uh... No, I already said that fun fact, didn't I? What? Uh, me and Biff with uh, same buddies. birthday. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty fun. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I recommended this because it's something that we had... It kind of played into two of my previous recommendations. Uh, one was the Please Don't Destroy movie. Uh, which was a new kind of just broad comedy, mm. like just a funny, you know, small just theme. Just given a, a young team of comedians. Well, not that uh, this was a young team thing, like Jake Johnson's in his, in his 40s. But no, I'm, I'm saying just, like they gave, well, I'm saying like they saw this comedian team, they're like, let's give them a movie yeah, shot. And it's it's made a movie. just like, yeah, because they wrote that movie too. So it's just like, it's a, it's a comedy written for a comedy's sake. It's not trying to be anything else. And this was also kind of involved with uh, Fool's Paradise when it was uh, written, directed, and starring the same guy. Yeah. In that case, it was Charlie Day. And in this case, it was Jake Johnson. The mm-hmm. premise of the movie, um, a guy, just uh, Jake Johnson plays him, a guy named Tommy, just average, run-of-the-mill guy, lives with his mom, went through a breakup, uh, works at a job, doesn't seem like he likes it. He gets approached by people, not by people, he gets approached by Andy Samberg playing mm-hmm. himself playing himself fantastically mm-hmm. and basically gives him the opportunity to be on a reality show on the dark web that people will be trying to hunt him if he can survive for 30 days he wins a million dollars the loophole in the game is he cannot be killed if he's with another person just physically yep. with another person and he agrees and then hilarity ensues as it does uh, like I said I wanted to recommend this because it's just a funny movie it's an hour and a half long. Mm-hmm. It's so much better than Anatomy of a Fall. This deserves a nominee for Best Actor and Best Picture and should have won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival because I really liked it, and it's just a great- I don't know what you base things on anymore. I don't know, dude. It's fucking 1030 at night. I'm not it's basing like, anything on much. I'm like, kind of running on fumes and my ritual whiskey it's, alternative. <laughs> it's like if you ate <laughs> dinner- and you're like, this steak's bad. And then you have great ice cream. You're like, I nominate this ice cream as best dinner. <laughs> it was. This was the best dinner. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Jake, what'd you think of it? Uh, this movie's great. It's great. It was great. It's such a this great is little something movie. When, you, uh, when I would compare it to Charlie Day's uh, movie. I'll say this. I think it's better. It's, uh, it's honestly better. Yeah. But you can tell that his vision was intact yeah. the entire time. Mm-hmm. This was something where he wanted to make this movie, and before you uh, recommended it on the podcast, uh, yeah. I was listening to him on uh, Comedy Bang Bang. Yeah, he's been making the rounds on podcasts, and right? Stuff. And uh, just listening to him talk about making this movie, he was like, you know, it's like the pandemic was making me go crazy, and it was like I just wanted to make this movie. He was like, I was going to make this movie for like twenty five thousand dollars until yeah. I had my friend tell me he's like, hold on, he's like we could probably get some producers. Probably get Anna Kendrick in it and probably make it an actual movie. Yeah. And he's like, so, okay. And he's like, so, you know, we worked on it until we got this. And I yeah. was, and it's produced see. by Andy Samberg in The Lonely Island. Yeah. Which is, it's nice. And it, it's just, uh, it's really funny. Jake Johnson is incredibly charming. And he's such a good Anna every Kendrick man. is honestly great in this movie. I loved her in this movie. You know what? I don't enjoy her you other my, work. You and my sister. My yeah? sister hates anna kendrick it's not that i hate her i think she's a fine person in world life i just can't watch she's her movies she's an academy award nominee who actually deserves it unlike whatever her name is from anatomy of a fall what was the movie uh up in the air george clooney 
Best Supporting Actress. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Great That's little it. role. Uh, George Clooney's a businessman who's all up in business, yeah, and then he gets the airplane He points. fires people. Yeah. That's his, that's his job. It's a great movie. Um, a- yeah, my sister hates Anna Kendrick, and I love bringing that's up how much I, 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 I honestly, I like Anna Kendrick. I don't, I'm not crazy about Anna Kendrick, yeah. but the fact that my sister hates Anna Kendrick so much. Yeah. I'm the biggest Anna Kendrick fan <laughs> in it's the not, world. Yeah, I wish her nothing but good things. She she's, seems like a really nice person in real so life. So charming. I just don't mind. Yeah. I just never cared for her movies. Did you see her on Hot Ones, and then this one. Why would I watch that when I mm. don't care for her stuff? You know who was on Hot Ones today? Jake Johnson. No. Oh, he would kill it. Martin Scorsese. No, someone. Uh, it was John Oliver. Will Ferrell. John Oliver. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> well, it's just one of those things where it's just like, why are you here? You're showing so many Emmys, and you seem like the person that he's just gonna, would least want to be there. He's going to say something really British about how hot it is. Several things. Very British. I don't know. Pip pip. I he think made, that's what you'd say. <laughs> it's too hot. He made it through, though. <laughs> Good for him. I could not make it. I can't do spicy stuff. That'd be fun. I can't. That'd He's, be a fun little game. No, pass. Pass yeah, on all that. It. Back to self-reliance. So yes. uh, I thought the premise of the movie was great. Yeah, just great. fun. And you, the thing that this movie had that uh, Stranger in Paradise uh, lacked was great theming, which was uh, it's about taking on your problems by yourself. And consistent theming, too. Yes. Yeah. His whole thing was uh, he's like fatally putting himself in a position where he needs to rely on his friends and family to help him. Mm-hmm. And like that's a really cool thing. Where he's like, this is getting me back out there in the world. That's how he gets back out. He sent out a Craigslist thing uh-huh. where he's like, hey, I'm in this murder thing. Uh, if you're in this murder thing, too, what if we hung out? That way they couldn't kill us. Yeah. And that's how he finds Anna Kendrick. Hey. That's just him asking, can somebody date me, please? I love the, because uh, the movie does start before he gets involved in this. He goes up to what we find out is his ex-girlfriend's house. Mm-hmm. And they apparently had been together for a long time. Yeah, like 12 years, I think he said. Yeah. And they had broken up. And he just starts to knock on the door, yeah. and then he does the thing where he's like, "Nope, yeah. nope, I can't." And then he just leaves, and he just hits you like you. It's a real show don't tell moment. You're like, "Oh, this guy, you know, he's going through some self esteem issues." Yeah, they show like the monotonous shot of like him and his job hating yeah. it. It's just a really like you were saying. The theming is on point. Yeah. Uh, after he joins the uh, dark web game show, he yeah. goes to his family, his two sisters, and his mom, and her, his one of his sisters' husbands. Who is hysterical? Yeah, uh, none of them believe him. Everyone thinks that he's just going crazy, yeah. or he's just doing it for attention. Yeah, he's like, "You're my brother, and I love you." <laughs> <laughs> to the point where they're just like, "You know, what do you what do you need? What yeah. do you, what, what do you need something from us?" And he's like, "No, I just need you to be around me so <laughs> yeah. I don't die." Yeah. <laughs> it's such a great. It's like, uh, what did you do this? Andy Samberg set you up. <laughs> <laughs> saying stuff like that Andy Samberg playing himself he's like who is, picked you up was it Andy Samberg he's like what, what, who was it Wayne Brady <laughs> that was a great thing and Wayne Brady shows up at the end where it's just Wayne Brady they're just talking he's like the, the let's make a deal guy he's like that's the, that game show they brought it back he's like yeah he's like I, I guess I'll go check it out <laughs> uh, it's just he's such a charmer it does have the great thing of you know uh, it's hard to explain but just the vibe that I got from it that was just like Everyone could see that there was a problem with mm. him. Like, he was stuck in a rut. You know, he's mm. butthurt over the breakup and everything like that, but he wasn't doing anything to better himself. Yeah. And then the thing that he chooses to get out of his rut, everyone is just like, this is the wrong. Yeah. This is the wrong thing to do. But it ends up working for him, kind of. Because he does meet up with Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick to, uh, responds to his Craigslist ad, like he said, and she's like, I'm in the game too. Yeah. And they end up going to like a hotel and they have like a. You know, not explicitly sexual or anything like that, but it's oh. just one of those things where they're hanging out yeah. constantly they're so they don't get murdered. Getting along really well. Yeah. Yeah. But he also has Biff Whiff. It was a homeless man that he hired God, to if, follow him around. If you're listening to this and you don't know who Biff Whiff is, just yeah. watch type, the Santa Claus uh, sketch from I Think You Should Leave. Yeah. Well, watch every sketch from I Think You Should Leave. But he's Santa Claus. And yeah. I th- and he's the shirt brother and the shirt brother sketch. Just so funny. Uh, effortlessly funny and Jake Johnson yeah. and him together it's not a thing so Biff Whiff plays a homeless guy that Jake Johnson pays he's like hey I need you to just yeah just stand next follow to me, me. Yeah. follow me around and the chemistry between those two it's just so funny and yeah. Jake Johnson's such a good everyman kind of Jake g- Johnson guy. just does a really good job of getting a good uh, 
is just reacting well to what other people are doing. Yeah. He's such a good reactor and to it's, what's going on. It credit to him. Like, this is his first time directing, too. Yeah. Writing and directing a movie. I think he fucking knocked it out of the park. Like, like it's so good. And I loved uh, just the part, the part where he's just walking away from uh, a club. Mm-hmm. And he's just walking by the guy. He's like, hey, it was really annoying about how much you knew about Michael Jackson, but it was also so cool. I used to love him as a kid. He's like, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to say that to people so many times. Yeah. Just be like, hey, the way that he presented, yeah, the way that he presented the information, yeah. you could tell that he was a he was very frustrated with him because the whole premise of it, Jake Johnson gets keeps continually getting attacked by people, and yeah. he gets attacked by a seven foot guy wearing uh, the Michael Jackson jacket from Beat It, the Beat yeah. It music video, and the he says, "Oh, I got he was wearing a Thriller jacket." And the guy yeah. says. He's it was like, actually beat it. Was, it. He's, yeah, he was wearing the red jacket from Beat It. He was with, like, the, with all the zippers? It's yeah, it's Beat It. It's a zip, It's a similar jacket, but it's the one from Beat It. It's not Thriller. And he was, he was like, that's really annoying that you know all that <laughs> stuff, but it's really cool. Yeah. It's like, I, I used to love him as a kid. And then, uh, <laughs> I guess, spoilers for this movie, like Jake Johnson, his father had abandoned him for a long time. And then over the course of the game show, it gets, I think... Just as simple as the plot was, I didn't know where it was going. Yeah. Because... It could at, have all been in his head. Right. It could have all been in his head. Uh, it could have all been fake. Yeah. It could have been a lot darker than you thought it was going to be. But mm-hmm. Andy Samberg was there as Andy Samberg. That's what gives it a little bit of air of legitimacy. Mm-hmm. But then Andy Samberg turns out he owes a lot of people money. He's been on a bender yeah. for a couple of weeks, which I, I just love when actors do that. Yeah. Just playing like a exaggerated version of themselves. And... Anna Kendrick, it turns out, she's not playing the game. Yeah. She's just not really a super... She thought it was like a role play. Yeah, date. like kind of a LARPing relationship thing yeah. where it's like, oh, we're going to pretend this. And right. then he thinks he's not in the game. But then he runs into another guy who's actually playing the game, mm. uh, played by Gata, who's a, a rapper. He's in the show uh, Dave. Did you ever watch Dave? I tried the first episode. I was really bored. Well, Gata's in it. It's it's mm. a good show. I mean, I like I like Lil Dicky. I mean, I like the songs. Yeah, he's got a new sure. album out. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, and it turns out the game, or the, the game show is a comedy. It's called uh, Delusions of Grandeur. Yeah. Where it's basically them trying, and that's why he gets attacked by a seven foot tall Michael Jackson person, because yeah. these people know he likes Michael Jackson. It's why he gets shot at by a cowboy. Yeah. Because uh, he watched a bunch of westerns as yeah. a kid, and just shit like that. He gets uh, played video games with his dad, and he gets uh, accosted by someone dressed up like Super Mario. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's just like you're just, dressed up like he Mario. He looked oddly like Pedro Pascal. I thought the same thing. I thought it was Pedro Pascal, yeah. too. I had to look on the IMDb. It's like, yeah. is this, he's like way too big to yeah. be Pedro Pascal. Oh, yeah. He's definitely a lot bigger than Pedro yeah. Pascal. But so I was like, that couldn't be him, but it was. Would have been really funny if it was Very Pedro similar. Pascal. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a guy just dressed up like Mario, and that was hilarious. Uh, he His dad shows up at the end, or no, in the, in the middle of it. Yeah. His dad gets brought to him in a limo. And they have like kind of a reconciliation moment, and it's just one of those things where I think Jake – that's his best acting scene, I think, where he's just basically like, is this the part of the show where we do this? Like, you want me to have this moment? Everything like that. And then at the end, when he thinks he wins the game, he has that same kind of thing. He's like, I did it. Like, where's all the mm-hmm. – where's my stuff? And I think that's kind of a a, a good way to show when you're tr- on a, a journey of trying to better yourself. You do get to this point where you're just like – Where's my reward? Like I mm-hmm. did everything I was supposed to do. Where's the where's the fucking payoff for this? And it's never what you want. And that's the beauty of this show is he gets paid in Greenland currency, yeah. which is like he gets four thousand dollars a month for yeah, like two hundred fifty months. Yeah, no, he's like, <laughs> like it's like twelve years yeah. <laughs> or however long or, or four years, whatever it is. Four thousand month. That's not too bad. Yeah, four thousand dollars a month. He gets an apartment with Biff with. Be and, hunted for. 30 years no i mean for 30 days but that's the whole point it's like that that's so it's not what you think it's gonna be but he's just happier as a person he has a he developed a lot he has closure with his ex-girlfriend the best thing was yeah i like that uh bookend yeah where he goes to his girlfriend he can't bring himself to knock on the door but at the end of the movie he's up at anna kendrick's door and he just rattles away yeah He's back in it, man. Such he's got a, his mojo. Such a great little movie. Just a really good movie. I cannot, and I think if he does another movie, I'm going to watch that movie for sure. Yeah, he was great in Jurassic World. Yeah, remember that yeah. movie wasn't that great. 
he was great in it. I didn't say that movie was. That <laughs> I mean, great. Lauren Lafters is great in it too, but it's not yeah. a great movie. Their chemistry is good too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I I really liked it, and it's on Hulu. And I think I guess since Please Don't Destroy was on Peacock, this was on Hulu. Mm-hmm. I think this is kind of the market for comedies like this now. Mm. Uh, street a uh, sweet spot on streaming. Mm. It seems uh, I think he said that they shot this movie in like under three weeks. Like mm. they kind of just got it done and shot it. I'm like, good, more of this. Like, put one of these out every couple months. Not a Jake Johnson thing per se, but just a smaller well, give me a comedy like this. And I'll I'll keep, you know, like what was Regal Cinema when we had like the unlimited thing? It was like twenty five bucks a month. Yeah, something like that. If there was a thing where you put out two of these a month, I'd I'd pay. I'd keep the streaming service just for that. Like, keep putting out the small comedies like this because mm. I love this type of movie. I see what you mean. What is this? Uh, did you already give your score for this? A three. Three? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this gets an official three from the podcast. Yeah. Because we Sounds both like it. We both this podcast it hates anatomy of a fall. <laughs> and loves, <laughs> loves self reliance. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you liked it, man. Like I thought this was just a fun one. Uh so yeah, thank you everybody for listening to the show. If you liked it, please leave a review. Uh I did some more research. That really helps algorithm. So just click five stars on whatever app you're listening to it. Leave a review. Tell your friends about the show. Obviously, that's the best way for more people to hear about the show. Mm. Uh, send us an email to upyouralleypod at gmail.com. And uh, let's find out first what we're going to be talking about next week. Yeah. Jake, what do you got for me? We're going old. Uh, yeah, buddy. Is this is this going to bug me as much as Anatomy of a Fall did? Oh, this is going to bug you so much. Oh, because I said all the things about old actors and how much old actors suck. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah. Is it Steamboat Willie? No. Uh-huh. But it's around that age. No. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a movie I love. Get it. Yeah, sure. It's a series of movies I love. Oh, We're boy. just going to watch the first one. Oh, boy. You're probably going to want to watch them all. It's called Thin Man. Thin Man? Yes. Wait, the Orson Welles thing? No. It's not Orson Welles. Oh, that's a third man. Yeah. Thin man. Thin. It's not not the, fat. Thin. Not the thin man. The thin man. 1934 American pre-code. Yes. Comedy mystery drama directed by W.S. Van Dyke. William Powell. Uh, stars As William Powell. The thin man. Huh. It is glorious. So I will 19- think that you were going to see... William Powell, and you're going to be like, that guy has got swagger for days, and you're going to see the relationship and chemistry with him and Myrna Loy, his love interest, and you're going to be like, that chemistry is undeniable. So you're giving me a 90-year-old movie. Yeah. Quite possibly as old of a movie as you could give somebody. No, you could definitely go back to 1913 with Thomas Edison's Frankenstein. Thomas Edison did a Frankenstein? No. Huh. So this is, um, I can stream it on Apple TV Plus. I got that. And then yep. there's After oh. the Thin Man as well. And then uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of Thin Man. The Thin Man Goes Home, Shadow of the Thin Man, Another Thin Man. They loved this. Song of the Thin Man. Yeah. And then Thin Man has a baby after a while. Uh, and then it goes uh, a, thin ma- a Thin Red Line. That's a different thing. <laughs> a Thin Man Red Line. The King's Man. The Mandalorian. <laughs> the, the search <laughs> the engine Mandalorian. Kinda, <laughs> search engine kind of goes off yeah. the rails on this. So 1934's uh, The Thin Man. Yes, sir. We're going to talk about this. Uh, uh, now nah, we'll go with something a little more lighthearted. <laughs> uh, I've got a documentary for you. Okay. Going back to the wheelhouse. True crime mm. documentary. Oh. Uh, available on Netflix. It's called American Nightmare. American Nightmare. So it's a three-part documentary series, and I think this is great for what it is. It's a story I had never really heard about. It's about uh, – it's they called it the real-life Gone Girl. Have you seen Gone Girl? I'm pretty sure you made me watch it on the podcast. No, not Gone That's Girl. Gone that Baby was Gone, Gone Baby Gone. Gone. Okay. Uh, no, it's Affleck, though. Gone Baby so, Girl Gone. Gone Girl Baby Gone. <laughs> you done? It's no. too late to be recording a it's podcast. It's when both – their universes, the Gone Girl and the Gone Baby. The Gone Baby comes through the Gone Universe is this to find like, the Gone Girl. Is this like the Death Stranding like, Baby? We have to get together. <laughs> and that's the Gone Baby, Gone Girl this Baby? It's the Goniverse. <laughs> they all take place. This is so dumb. <laughs> anyway, so it's a, it's a mystery. It's a true crime thing. But it's three parts. They're both like 45, or they're all 45-ish minutes long. 
but I've never seen a true crime thing done like this because I knew nothing about this case. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember it being in in the news, but it's pretty recent. It's like 2017 that it happened. Okay. And at the end of the first one, you're like, oh, this person's a fucking terrible person. And at the end of the second part, you're like, oh, this person's a terrible person. And at the end, you're like, I don't know what I think about this really anymore, but this was a terrible thing that happened. Okay. So, yeah, it's really great true crime, American Nightmare, available to stream on Netflix. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about The Thin Man next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends about the show. Jake, thanks for coming over. Love you, buddy. I love you, buddy. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.